All right, guys. Uh, this is the lecture on alkenes, and let's get started. Okay, uh, so alkenes are actually a lot more exciting than alkanes, right? Because uh, the CC double bond, right, is a lot more reactive, right? So the pi bond has high electron density, which will attract electrophiles. All right, we've gone through under introduction, right? What are actually electrophiles? Electrophiles are actually electron deficient species which will look for electron rich region to attack. All right, and also due to the unsaturated nature of alkenes, it will undergo addition reactions. All right, so on the whole, alkene undergo electrophilic addition. All right, so this is just one example of a CC double bond opening up to form two. Uh, single covalent bond with uh, Br. Okay, so why do alkenes want to undergo electrophilic addition reaction? Because energetically speaking, right, the product here, right, is uh, more stable and has a lower energy level than the reactant here. All right, so if you want to go ahead and calculate uh, the enthalpy change, right, you can actually look up the data booklet and you will actually realize that yes, the enthalpy change is exodermic, all right, therefore likely to be feasible. Okay, so now when we look at this electrophilic addition mechanism, right, uh, this is actually our second uh, out of six mechanism that we have to learn for the A levels, all right, and uh, Basically, what happens, right, is that <clears throat> the Br2 molecule approaches the alkene and they get polarized by the high electron density in the pi bond, all right? So they get a delta positive and delta negative dipole moment. And you can see that the arrow, right, actually starts from the double bond and points towards the electron deficient Br. and Br2 undergoes a heterolytic fission, all right? So this is a slow step. Slow step means that it is the rate determining step. All right, means that it has the highest activation energy. Okay, so if you have learned kinetics, you will know what is rate determining step. Okay, so the carbocation is the intermediate here. intermediate all right and then of course the br right that was uh, formed from the first step will actually come back as a nucleophile to attack your carbocation and then forming your product okay so this is fairly straightforward let's look at the second example where we are trying to add a asymmetric reagent all right such as your hbr to a asymmetric alkene so what you notice is that after the first attack, right, the intermediate form, right, it can either be the carbocation on C2 or the carbocation on C1, right? So if we were to form the carbocation on C2, it will be slightly more stable because of the R group is electron donating, right, which will help to disperse the positive charge on the carbocation. Right? As opposed to if you were to put uh, the positive charge on the first carbon. All right, so this has two R groups. So this second carbon. So this is the other possible intermediate. So you can see that it has only one R group, which is electron donating. So it is less stable. Okay. Okay, so and the second step is the same. Right. So so this is like a recap of what we have already learned for your alkanes. Alkanes you already learned that uh, R groups are electron donating and they help to uh, disperse the positive charge on the carbocation. Alright. Uh, alkanes we actually learned that uh, 
for radicals, right? But it's the same because the carbon here, right, is also electron deficient. All right, same as the radical that we learned in alkane. Okay, so uh, basically this quick check, right, uh, is basically just to show you how you will add a ICL across a C double bond. All right, so even without the H in the reagent, right, we are able to differentiate the delta positive and delta negative on the reagent. Okay, how do we do that? Based on electronegativity. Okay, so Cl is a lot more electronegative, so you get the delta negative. All right, so in this way, we can actually predict how the reagent will add across the CC double bond. Okay, next we want to look at the solvent. Okay, if the solvent can act as an electrophile or a nucleophile, right, it will also react with the organic compound. Okay, so for example, if you use water as a solvent, right, when reacting with, uh, when reacting Br, bromine, with ethene, uh, the major product will be different because in the second step, right, your water can act as a nucleophile and compete with your Br2. Sorry, compete with your Br minus, all right, as the nucleophile. Okay, if you dissolve salts like NaCl, the Cl minus can also compete in the second step. Okay, likewise, your alcohol. Okay, so if, for example, right, if we add bromine in aqueous medium right what happens is in the second step there will be two nucleophile and because water is in excess right is there's a lot of water molecule in aqueous obviously so water will actually be more likely to attack your carbocation and hence forming the product Okay, so the common question is student asks is why doesn't the H plus from water act as an electrophile? Because uh, the OH bond is very, very strong. So it doesn't really cleave as easy as BR, BR bond. All right, if you don't believe me, you can look up your data booklet. Okay, so when NaCl is added to the mixture, right, <clears throat> you just have one more product which shows the chlorine nucleophile being added. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is racemic mixture. Okay, what is a racemic mixture? It is a one-one mixture, one is to one mixture of the positive and negative inatumous. So if you remember under intro to organic chem, right, inatumous are uh, your basically your your isomer, your 3D isomer. All right, that arises from your chiral carbon. Okay, so a racemic mixture means that you have a chiral carbon, but because the inatumous, right, are actually uh, in equal amount, 50% each, so they actually cancel out the optical activity. <clears throat> so uh, one work example here is they ask, why when the product formed from the reaction below does not rotate plane polarized light? Okay, so the explanation is because from the carbocation, right, which is sp2 hybridized trigonal planar, your nucleophile can attack from the top or from the bottom, giving you 50% of each inatumous. All right, so this creates a racemic mixture which will not be optically active. Okay, so this quick check is the same thing. So you just need to uh, know that it forms a racemic mixture. <coughs> All right, so let's look at some reactions of alkenes. Uh, basically, you add halogens, right, across the CC double bond, you will just add across. All right, the observation is decolorization of your color of your uh, halogen. <coughs> And if you add H, Hx right, across the CC double bond, 
it will also just uh, add it across, but take note, it will add, if it is asymmetrical, it will add according to Markovnikov rule. Okay, and when you add water, uh, you take note of the conditions, it is rather drastic. All right, uh, there's two ways you can add water. One is the industrial method, which is the drastic condition, or you can use a laboratory synthesis method, which is less drastic. Okay, but it is indirect, means you have to use two steps. <clears throat> Alkenes can also be reduced by uh, hydrogen gas using nickel catalyst under high temperature and high pressure. All right, so the observation is not really that obvious. You have to use a pressure reading machine so that you can see the decrease in the gaseous pressure. All right, so if let's say you don't want to use high temperature, high pressure, you basically use a more effective, uh, but this, is, this catalyst is quite expensive uh, because these are rare metals, right? <clears throat> okay. This next part uh, is about oxidation of alkenes. So you can actually do a mild oxidation by using KMnO4 co-alkaline. So your double bond will actually open up to give you a diol, okay, to alcohol. Observation is decolorization of purple KMnO4 and the formation of a brown PPT. Okay, this brown PPT can only be formed in the basic medium. All right, so take note of that. Okay, so this quick check is for you to try. You can pause the video here and draw out the structure. All right, so uh, the first one is a reduction where you open up all the double bonds and substitute H in. And the second is a mild oxidation where you open up all the double bonds and form all the diodes. Okay, please note that temperature affects the type of oxidation and not the medium, all right? So, cold KMnO4 will result in mild oxidation regardless of whether it's acidic or basic, all right? Hot KMnO4 will result in strong oxidative cleavage, okay? Which is <clears throat> the example that we're going to look at now. Okay, so strong oxidation you will cleave your double bond and you will just introduce the O where the double bond has been. All right. The observation is decolorization of purple KMnO4. Okay, so draw the structural formula. Okay, you can pause the video for a while while you draw your answer. Okay, so basically when you hit with hot acidified KMnO4, you will cleave here and here. So what are the products that will be formed? Okay, if the carbon has no H, right, it will basically just add a O. <clears throat> All right, if it has H, it will oxidize to carbon dioxide. Uh, no, not carbon dioxide, carboxylic acid, sorry. Okay, and if it was a terminal alkene, right, means that it's bonded to 2H, it will form your carbonic acid, which... Okay, so this two, right, will further oxidize. This will further oxidize to carbon dioxide and water. Okay, carbonic acid will decompose. Remember, the keyword here is decompose also to carbon dioxide and water. All right. What's the difference between these two? Okay, uh, ethane dioic acid is stable if it is not in this kind of condition. All right, carbonic acid is unstable and will decompose regardless of what condition is in, all right? Okay, so if you observe carbon dioxide after strong oxidation, usually it indicates the presence of terminal alkene. All right, so let's look at the deductive question. All right, so we look at the, the two structures, right? And then we, we are supposed to deduce the structure of a molecule, right? Which has this formula, C9H16. 
all right? Given that the only organic products form was propanone here and butanoic acid here, all right? <clears throat> okay, since uh, we, we see from the molecular formula, right, it's, there's nine, nine carbons, uh, but here we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have eight? Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So we only have seven. There's four here and three here. So we are missing two carbons. So likely our missing product in the middle is ethane dioic acid, which was oxidized to carbon dioxide. All right. So we just need to add in the two carbon here and get rid of the O. All right, get rid of all the O. And then we rejoin back everything together to get our initial product. Okay? So why can't the carbon atoms be from terminal carbons? Okay, if we put double bonds at the terminal, we will not be able to get the other two products. Huh? Okay? All right, so the quiz, you can try it out, okay? And then you can look at the answers. Basically, if you put hot acidified chemical 4, you will cleave the double bond here. If it's in alkaline solution, right, the only difference is your carbon dioxide, your carbonic acid uh, will not form carbon dioxide. Rather, it will actually form your carbonate anion. Okay, hot acidified will cleave this molecule here. So one trick I like to, to teach my student is to label your carbon. All right, so this will be your first, second, third, fourth, fifth. All right, so you can see that your first and fifth carbon have a uh, hydrogen. So they will end up as carboxylic acid. Okay, the only difference for the last question is, is in alkaline medium, so you will form your carboxylate, all right, as it undergoes neutralization. Okay, so for alkenes, right, um, the elimination, all right, these are your conditions. You can either choose any one of them will do. All right, usually the one that we remember the most is, the most common is the first one. All right, the first one. Excess concentrated sulfuric acid, 170 degrees. <clears throat> okay, we can also eliminate uh, HX using uh, alcoholic KOH or NaOH. The idea is to just use a strong base. All right, the idea is to just use a strong base to abstract your acidic HX. All right, so you form your alkenes. Okay, Sysef rule says that the more substituted alkenes will be the major product. <clears throat> the reason is beyond the scope of this lesson. <laughs> so you, you learn it when you get to university. Okay, so if we were to eliminate all right, there's two options. You can eliminate this here, or you can eliminate the H and the OH here. All right, so this will be the major product because it has three R groups. All right, this, this only has two R groups. All right, so... <clears throat> the more substituted alkenes will be formed as the major product. All right, so these are just a further practice for you. All right, so with that, uh, we come to the end of alkenes. Hopefully you have learned something. Um, apologize that you, are, you all are not able to ask me any questions, so I also will not know uh, what you don't know. Uh, but I think the, the silver lining is you can still WhatsApp your teachers to ask them if you have any question. Okay, because I think um, some of your teachers have actually taught at a JC before. Okay, so I'll see you guys soon. <clears throat>